Nothing But The Truth. Hello, I'm Raj Chengap of India Today and your host for Nothing But The Truth. Every week, I'll bring you insights and clarity on a major topical issue that matters to you without holding back on the truth. For Indian democracy to function well, we need not just a stable ruling party, but also a vibrant opposition. Now, here is an analogy that I learned while covering uh, space rocket launches, which, is, uh, which will illustrate in some ways why I think so. Space scientists say that for every rocket launch, there are two major forces at play. One is the upward lift that is caused by the thrust given by the rocket engines, and the other, and that is uh, determined by the force of gravity, uh, which needs to be overcome, and that is called drag. Both these forces, the lift and the drag, are crucial for the success of any launch, any rocket launch that is there. If you have only lift, which you're soaring, and no drag, your rocket after a certain point will soar into the sky, but very soon start tumbling uncontrollably and crash. To steady its flight uh, through the Earth's atmosphere, it needs the drag of gravity. That keeps it stable till it powers its way past the Earth's atmosphere. So to bring that uh, analogy back to Indian politics, the ruling Bharatiya Janata Party, or the BJP, headed by Narendra Modi, is now piloting the Indian government. They are hoping to make it soar to even greater heights by winning a third consecutive majority in the upcoming general elections this summer. That's just a couple of months away. But they will need the drag forces that a strong opposition provides to enable them to chart a steady course towards their destination, whether it's Vixit Bharat or any other ideals that they have, and for it not to get out of hand, which in politics means be becoming, in many senses, dictatorial. For a while, Last year, the opposition India, uh, in India seemed to be finally getting their act together to provide the requisite drag forces to challenge the BJP juggernaut. They formed the Indian National Development Inclusive Alliance, or India for short, that has as many as 27 parties in their, hold, in their fold till recently. This, when the ruling National Democratic Alliance, or NDA, headed by the BJP, seemed to have dwindled, dwindled its own numbers as alliance partners steadily began to desert them. But on January 20th, one of its key leaders, the alliance key leaders, Bihar Chief Minister Nitish Kumar deserted the India alliance and joined forces with the BJP again. He was sworn in for an incredible ninth time as Chief Minister of Bihar, a record of its own, uh, and Kumar's defection was a body blow, no doubt, to the India alliance that was already tottering and struggling to get its act together. So in this episode of Nothing But The Truth, we will look at the seeming collapse of the Indian, uh, India Alliance and how it will impact the outcome of the upcoming general election. First, let's look at why things had come to such a sorry pass for the opposition alliance, which, as I said earlier, for a while seemed to be posing a formidable challenge to the BJP. Now, Nitish Kumar was a key component of the India Alliance. In August 2022, Kumar had surprised the BJP by taking the extreme step of breaking his party's alliance with the, his party, the Janata, uh, Janata Dal United, the JDU's alliance uh, with the BJP in Bihar. Till that time, he had run a coalition government with the BJP after the two uh, had combined their forces to fight the November 2020 uh, Bihar Assembly elections and won it quite con convincingly. After dumping the BJP, and this is in August 2022, uh, Kumar went on to form an alliance with the Rashtriya Janata Dal, the RJD and the Congress, the Mahakad Bandhan as it was called, then ruled Bihar with Kumar as the Chief Minister and RJD's Tejasvi, the son of uh, Lalu Prasad Yadav, as the Deputy Chief Minister. Now Bihar, with 40 Lok Sabha seats, is crucial to, uh, for the BJP in its bid to win a third consecutive term and Nitish joining hands with the opposition was a major setback. When I met Nitish Kumar with my colleague in Delhi soon after he parted ways with the BJP in 2022, Kumar told me that he believed the Congress had to be an integral part of any opposition alliance. He reiterated that he was not for a third front that was being floated by other opposition, uh, opposition parties who had wanted to leave out the Congress party. He felt that only the Congress had the 
pan-national stature to challenge the BJP along with the regional parties and wanted the opposition to mold the alliance around the Congress. He had hoped that the opposition would get their act together by working out a simple formula, and the formula he proposed is, was that whichever party had demonstrated its hold over the electorate in a particular state, uh, they, that party would lead the charge, and the other parties in the alliance would play a supporting role to that party. Now, that seemed a good formula. But uh, though he would not admit it, Kumar, Nitish Kumar, had ditched the BJP in August 2022 because he felt that the BJP was working to split his own party, the JDO, and dethrone him from the post. Now, Kumar had seen what the BJP had just done a month earlier in Maharashtra, where it had split the ruling Shiv Sena and created a rebel party or rebel Shiv Sena around Eknath Shinde. The move, if you recall, toppled the Maharashtra government, headed by the Shiv Sena, Chief Uddhav Thakri at that time, uh, which had been in alliance with the Nationalist Congress Party or the NCP and the Indian National Congress, and the three had come together to form the Mahavikas Agadi or the MVA after the Shiv Sena, the Udav Thakre Shiv Sena broke ranks with the BJP, its alliance partner, in, the 2000, uh, in 2019, soon after the assembly elections. There was a dispute over who was to be the leader. Udav Thakre said he was to be the chief minister and peeled off and formed the MVA. Now, the MVA posed a formidable threat to Modi and the BJP as an MVA combined ruled India's most economically forward state. And let's not forget, Maharashtra, with 48 seats, has the second largest number of Lok Sabha seats after Uttar Pradesh, which has 80 of them. Modi, along with his astute deputy, Amit Shah, had by then built the BJP into the world's largest democratic party and were not ones to take things lying down. First, they ensured that they won the Uttar Pradesh Assembly elections in March 2022 with a thumping majority. That saw Yogi Adityanath uh, anointed as uh, chief minister for a second term. Then in June the same year, the BJP broke the back of the ruling MVA in Maharashtra by winning over Iknath Shinde, as I'd mentioned earlier. And the, it is said that the BJP had planned to topple Nitish Kumar at that time, but that is when the wily Bihar a chief minister struck first and broke his alliance with the BJP. Now, Nitish Kumar will not admit it, but uh, the move he made to break from the BJP at that time was not only for his own survival, but also for a chance for him to emerge as the consensus op opposition candidate to become prime minister. After the, getting the opposition together, he also gave them a new narrative. He released a caste survey in his own state that strengthened the demand for a similar exercise across the nation. If you recall, the caste sh uh, survey showed that Almost 65% of the uh, caste group in, in uh, Bihar were among the backward and the most backward classes, while the reservation for them was barely 29% in their state. So there was this demand to ensure that they get proportionate representation, which they, the opposition thought would become a major move. But uh, the move to form a full-fledged alliance, meanwhile, would happen only in June 2023, almost a year later, when Nitish Kumar chaired a famous meeting in Patna that was attended by 16 opposition parties. Now, in the second meeting in July 2023, chaired by the erstwhile uh, United uh, Progressive uh, Alliance chairperson, Sonia Gandhi, the UPA alliance that formed and run the government uh, for almost two, ter uh, for two terms uh, between uh, 2004 and 2014, they held a meeting in Bengaluru where Sonia Gandhi chaired it, and 10 more parties joined uh, the grouping, and the name India emerged at that particular time. Remember, this is the time the Congress is on resurgence. It had won Himachal, and it had won Karnataka the previous month, just before the India uh, second meeting of the India Alliance that was there. Now, if the India Alliance at that time had worked out an effective seat-sharing agreement uh, among itself, it could have dented the BJP's chances. Remember, um, it, it, it had a strength, if you calculate all of that, it could challenge the BJP in at least 313 out of the 400, uh, 543 Lok Sabha seats across 10 states. That was the kind of strength that India had. It could take on 343 seats uh, and challenge the BJP directly. Now, in these seats, the BJP in 2019 had won 150 seats on nearly half of its tally, or total tally of 300 seats that it finally won which means that if the India Alliance game plan uh, could 
in some senses, drop the BJP's number as the first attempt to much below the halfway mark of 272 seats needed for a simple majority in the Lok Sabha. That plan would uh, then push the BJP to around 200 and 230 seats so that the power of Narendra Modi and the BJP would be considerably diminished. That would be plan A. And of course, the plan B would be the best outcome would be for the alliance to capture a majority on their own. So if the alliance had really pushed at that time, if it really had worked out the seat sharing arrangement in the second meeting and not waited for the others, the results would have been far different. Now let's come to uh, you know, why things went, uh, started to go downhill after that. And there were, I believe, five major reasons for the downfall of the India Alliance. There might be more, but these are the five major uh, reasons that one could, design, uh, to, one could see as uh, we analyze what has hap happened in the past few months. The first, uh, the first major reason for the decline of uh, the India Alliance was that the Congress party uh, and the way it behaved. After the first edition of the Rahul Gandhi uh, Bharat Jodo Yatra, he's on his second uh, edition right now, and the first one came to end in January 2023. Now, this had rejuvenated the Congress, and the Congress began to, uh, the party began to assert itself. The wins in the assembly polls in Himachal Pradesh, which I talked earlier in December 2022, and in Karnataka in May 2023, gave the Congress the impression that the party was on a major comeback trail. Uh, so in the crucial assembly elections in the Hindi belt in Chhattisgarh and Rajasthan, where the Congress was, in, uh, was ruling, and in Madhya Pradesh, where the BJP had toppled the Congress government, the Congress party decided to ignore its new alliance partners' demands and decided to go on their own. Now, this was the elections that was just concluded, the ma three major elections in the Hindi heart belt, and that proved to be a serious mistake. So while the Congress scored a decisive win in Telangana, the party failed the Hindi belt te test that was put towards it. The BJP won all three states handsomely, thereby boosting its chances for the Lok Sabha. The Congress also fatally delayed reaching a seat-sharing uh, engagement with its India partners in the hope to strike a better bargain. In fact, the newly formed alliance, instead of uh, moving at top speed, didn't finalize any strategy when they had their third meeting in Mumbai, hosted by Shiv Sena uh, or UBT uh, faction, President Uddhav Thakare, on 31st August 2023. It was only in December 19, 2023, after the opposition members were expelled from the parliament session and the Congress had lost the Hindi belt by that time in the, that uh, the alliance got down to discussing seat sharing and joint rallies. By then, they had lost six crucial months and the Congress defeats in the Hindi heartland uh, states exposed the party's ability to confront the BJP and it was found seriously wanting by the other parties. Even earlier, let's be clear, the Congress record in seats where it was in direct contest with the BJP didn't give the opposition much confidence. If you recall, in the 2019 general election, of the 423 seats the Congress contested in 2019, it won only 52 seats. Now, of these, in the 186 seats that the Congress faced uh, where they challenged the BJP directly, it won only 16 of them. So, uh, despite the setbacks in the Hindi heartland, when the alliance had its fifth meeting, um, a virtual one on 13 January 2024, the Congress went ahead and made Malikarjun Kharge, uh, the current Congress president, as the chairperson of the India alliance instead of Nitish Kumar. They offered Nitish Kumar a uh, convener's post, which he declined, and the Congress seemed to have no clue that, the, uh, that Nitish Kumar was about to jump ship and made no effort to woo him. So uh, instead of rising to the occasion and playing a unifying role, the Congress started making unrealistic demands for seats, and this was the first major cause of the unraveling of the India Alliance. If the Congress had stepped back I had seen the writing on the wall much earlier, had got Nitish into the fold, made sure the other partners felt comfortable, they would not, the situation of the India Alliance would not have been as bad as it is now. Now let's come to the second major reason uh, um, that uh, uh, saw all, the, uh, all of the big uh, India, uh, India Alliance's big constituents, especially the regional uh, parties, come under immense pressure from the BJP, which 
as we saw, was using all its arsenal in its uh, means to destabilize the parties. We saw what it did in Maharashtra earlier, and then, of course, more recently in Bihar. And among the accusations against the BJ, BJP and uh, the way it went about its business was the way the controversial enforcement uh, directorate uh, or the ED conducted uh, investigations against key leaders of the alliance, the India alliance, that seemed to be politically timed. In West Bengal, Chief Minister Mamta Banerjee's nephew, Abhishek Banerjee, the General Secretary of the ruling uh, Trinamool uh, Congress Party, or TMC, faced ED investigations against an alleged uh, cash-for-job scam. In Delhi, Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal of the AAP Party was facing ED investigations over his alleged links uh, to the liquor scam that had already felled, uh, if you recall, his deputy, Chief Minister Manish Sisodia. In Jharkhand, Hemant uh, Soren of the ruling Jharkhand Mukti Morcha uh, faced ED money laundering charges in a land scam case that forced him to resign as Chief Minister of Jharkhand on 31st January. Tejasvi and his father, Lalu Prasad Yadav, were also being questioned by the ED for cases when Lalu was uh, the Chief Minister many decades ago. In the Congress party, both Rahul Gandhi and Sonia Gandhi had the ED investigating them in their involvement in the National Herald case. The opposition uh, charges the Modi government with using probe agencies like the ED to prevent the leaders from entering into alliances that can prove electorally counterproductive for the BJP. There was little doubt that because of these sustained probes by the ED on its leaders, the opposition party began or the opposition parties began to lose the perception battle as they were being projected as corrupt in contrast to Modi's, uh, Modi government's, uh, or in, uh, Mr. Modi himself's, relatively scam-free tenure. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Modi and the BJP had uh, begun to further consolidate their position. Apart from the strong winds in the Hindi heartland, the Ram Mandir uh, consecration recently seemed to have won widespread support of, uh, from the Hindu majority and was certain to boost the BJP chances for the general election. In Maharashtra, with 48 Lok Sabha seats, the split in the Shiv Sena, and more recently the Nationalist uh, Congress Party that the BJP also engineered, has considerably weakened the India constituents over there. The BJP's dominant and domineering position began to have its effect and was the third major reason for the alliance becoming shaky and the position that it now faces. In fact, the regional parties began to balk uh, against sharing seats with the Congress. And in West Bengal, internal uh, surveys by the TMC showed that 53% of those poll would vote for the BJP at the center. This seems to have shaken Mamta Banerjee, who unilaterally announced that she would yield, uh, the TMC would yield only two of the 42 seats in West Bengal for the Congress and was ready to give only a third seat if the Congress agreed to share seats in Assam and Meghalaya. The Congress, however, would not settle for anything less than six seats in West Bengal and was against any tie-up in the northeastern states where it felt the TMC had no role to play. Mamta Banerjee, and this was even before Nitish Kumar left the alliance, Mamta Banerjee then announced her decision to go solo in the state on January 24th. In Punjab, Chief Minister Bhagwant Maan of, uh, of the AAP party said his party would have no truck with the Congress in that state. In Uttar Pradesh, which has 80 Lok Sabha seats, the Samajwadi party has offered the Congress only 11 seats, and the alliance remains extremely shaky there. Now let's come to the fourth major reason for the impending collapse of the India, uh, India alliance, and uh, this was largely uh, both a lack of a credible narrative to topple the BJP and a credible uh, face from the opposition to challenge Modi to the post of prime minister. The alliance's inability to reach a seat-sharing agreement or come up with a convincing counter-agenda to that of the BJP dented its image even further. Meanwhile, Modi and the BJP worked tirelessly to boost their chances, not leaving any stone unturned. Now, uh, Prime Minister Modi not only appropriated the op opposition's welfare and development plank, including the guarantees that the Congress kept promising, but played the Hindu card to the hilt and also has won, uh, has uh, wooed the women voter by uh, having the Women's Reservation Bill passed in Parliament uh, in the last, uh, in, in the December session of Parliament. Even the national caste census that the opposition hoped to divide the Hindu vote now stands shaky with Nitish's exit. Which brings us to the fifth major reason why the India Alliance is in deep trouble. 
Nitish's exit, Nitish Kumar's exit, dealt a major psychological blow to the alliance apart from its losing the perception battle. Moreover, with the return of Nitish Kumar to the BJP, the advantage of the reservations issue has swung firmly towards the JDU-BJP alliance in Bihar. In 2019, the combined one, uh, the JDU-BJP uh, combined in Bihar, won 54% of the vote share and 39 of Bihar's uh, 40 seats in the Lok Sabha. With Nitish now back in the fold, the BJP hopes to retain the non-Yadav OBC and the most backward classes, uh, social grieving, uh, grouping that makes up a fourth of Bihar's population and over whom Nitish, Nitish retains a very significant grip. The limitations of the opposition's caste plank also stood exposed in the recent assembly elections in the three heartland states, the Hindi heartland states, uh, that, had, uh, that have a significant OBC population, whether Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan, and Chhattisgarh, where the Congress actually promised a caste census uh, if voted to power, but lost in all the three states. So only in the South, because of the strength of the Congress in Karnataka and Telangana, the DMK in Tamil Nadu, and the left parties in Kerala, where the alliance, remain, uh, the alliance remains truly strong. There are, of course, pockets in Maharashtra that we have talked about, and across the country, where alliance parties do have their strongholds. So should we say, is it all over barring the screaming for the India alliance? Uh, and of course, in, in a democracy, you should not rule out anything. The, the impossible could happen. So let us not spell the death knell for the alliance. Their biggest hope now is that the individual constituents of the India alliance, especially in the big states of Maharashtra, we still have the MVA uh, functioning. West Bengal, where TMC is very strong. Bihar, where Tejasvi seems to be coming up. Uh, Tamil Nadu, Stalin continues to hold. Kerala, of course, we talked of the left parties holding over there. Karnataka, Telangana, and the Congress also has major support, uh, as we saw in the recent ele assembly elections in uh, the Hindi heartland states of Madhya Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, and Rajasthan, where their vote share didn't decline. Now, each of these con constituents uh, uh, have to function at full pelt and also demonstrate their ability to challenge the BJP if they are able to, uh, you know, make a dent in the BJP's numbers. Particularly the Congress. It has to work out a way of challenging the BJP in the 180-odd seats that it, uh, it has direct contest in. Uh, all this gives the opposition still a slim chance. Uh, uh, as I said, in politics, nothing is impossible, but that chance is getting slimmer by the day. For more details, you can read the latest issue of India Today, which has an in-depth report on the collapse of the India Alliance by my colleagues. Thank you for watching this episode of Nothing But The Truth. I look forward to having you with me next week. Nothing But The Truth.